It's your boy Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast, your host of the number one podcast coming to you live in America. And today we have the CEO of BCA Culture. She is absolutely changing the game. Her and her team are changing the game. We do business. During the global pandemic, an alarming amount of minority businesses were impacted by the plummeting economy. While the majority of businesses were able to benefit from the additional funds that were injected into the U.S. economy, a disproportionate amount of minority businesses missed out on obtaining business funding due to lack of knowledge and or proper documentation and misinformation. BCA Culture is changing the landscape. It is a technology company with a focus on business credit. This firm has created a process that will help the novice business owner obtain top credit to help introduce new products, services, float payroll, purchase equipment, or even maintain his daily operation. And we have the incredible, amazing Miss Darby herself. She is busting the doors wide open and changing the way we do business. So please help me welcome hearts, likes, shares, if you got them, Miss Darby of BCA Culture. Yay! Hey, Marcus. What's going on in the Gentleman's <laughs> Podcast family? Gentleman's Style Podcast family, how are you? Whoop, whoop, whoop. We are glad to have you. <laughs> I Thank you. Make it bounce there. Mm, mm, mm. I should, I'm going to get some music. One of these days, mark my words, I'm going to get some music on this show. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you, Miss Darby, for blessing the stage. We absolutely. appreciate you. You are absolutely amazing. And your company is changing the absolute landscape. Tell us. Tell us a little bit about, about yourself on, oh. on the brains behind BCA culture. You know, you know, I always, I'm used to being with myself, um, and and so I always just say that I'm literally a visionary. Um, I love to give back. I love to uh, contribute and give to people. You know, I have a formal education actually uh, from the University of Tennessee in uh, uh, finance international business, right? But then I also uh, come from um, a family from the South, from the deep South, uh, born and raised um, in Valdosta, then to Macon, then to Atlanta. And, um, you know, currently here now with myself and my family, uh, just been truly blessed to have, you know, my mom and my dad grew up in a single parent home. So I am a testament that, you know, anything that um, you set your mind to, you can do. So shout out to the single mothers out there. Um, and my mom really instilled into us, and also the single fathers, because there's single fathers out there. But um, my mom really instilled into both my brother and myself, from my experience, the, the, the willpower to succeed, the importance of entrepreneurship, the importance of uh, truly giving back. So a lot of the uh, passions that I have link up with that. And then I also am talented. I have a gift in singing and songwriting as well. Um, and it just so it. happens that it. <laughs> it just so happens that business it kind of like took over. I mean, it's kind of grown into its own entity. So you know, I am a creative entrepreneur. So shout out to the creative entrepreneurs out there. Um, just keep going and keep believing and keep progressing and you can be multi-talented. So that's a little bit about me. Woo! Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. That, that touched me. Thank you for that. Wonderful. Wonderful. You are extensive girl. Your resume <laughs> is huge. That's major. So what's the story behind your company? What's the story that inspired you to start BCA culture? So, you know, you said something very key that I'm um, in the beginning about the minorities and funding. And so what happened was many, many, many years ago, um, reached out to uh, one of my mentors. He was talking about business credit. You know, back then it was like it was like the wild, wild west. And um, he was showing me how he was purchasing cars and able to purchase uh, commercial buildings um, under his business, was able to, you know, 
really grow his company. And so um, at the time, he had a real estate company, tax companies, just had multiple companies in different industries. And he really taught and showed me the game. Then I got introduced to um, senior vice president of a bank that really uh, taught me the fundamentals and the importance of commercial credit also known as business credit. And so um, fast forward, um, I actually was traveling up and down the road doing consultations um, with uh, large hospitals, helping them to convert to digital operations through software. And literally while I was on the road, I asked someone in, to do my business credit for me while I was on the road and just build it out, you know, and just didn't think about it. It was supposed to be done in a certain time frame. Then a couple months passed by and then it wasn't done. So I was like, yo, what's happening? Make a long story short, you know how that ended. It did not pretty much get done. So it made me tell back into my roots, Marcus. It made me, you know, say, you know what? You know how to do this. Take the time to do it. And then I started um, doing a, a business credit and building personal, I mean, excuse me, building business credit for clients. And then I started sending referrals. And I was like, well, I have to be able to teach more people. And at the time, uh, it was more of an online course known as the Business Credit Agency. So the whole concept back then was an agency teaching entrepreneurs how to build business credit and how to build their own. So um, when I did that, within about six months, about 75 entrepreneurs um, got about four and a half million dollars in business credit and funding. That was like at the end of uh, 20, I think it was 2019, the summer of 2019. And then by the end of 2019, it, we were like escalating, but we were just teaching online courses at the time. Fast forward the story, um, I reached out to um, Adam and I was like, hey, he's a, a software developer. I was like, hey, Adam, can you build out a CRM system? Because, you know, we were wanting to keep everything organized. And I knew that I wanted us to build our own database and our own platform. And Adam was like, yeah, but this isn't, you know, a CRM system. This isn't simple what you're telling me. This is actually a full-fledged software. And, I mean, the rest is history. We literally took the class, right, the classes that I was teaching, the information, took a piece of my mind in reference to business credit and funding and how companies should build it and how companies should be structured and you know the companies to reach out to it, it eliminates all the guesswork we took all that I was teaching into a class and then put it in a system that literally you can click at the click of a button so that's how BCA culture came about as far as a culture of entrepreneurs that can literally use our software to advance and build business credit and obtain um, funding so that so that is powerful for the culture, right? Because that's major. It sounds like um, you were inspired because of the lack of information and the lack of resources and the lack of people willing to educate. And so you started um, going down this path to provide a one stop. It sounds like a one stop shop where we, us, you, me yes. can now dive in and say, man, now I can get to a better place. Now I can take my business to the next level. That's what I hear. That's what it sounds like yeah. to me. And, yeah, that's and that's major. Right that's major. That's absolutely major. And so what is the biggest obstacle that you see in your professional experience? What's the most common mistake people make when starting to build business credit? You know, that foundation. I talk about it a lot. Um, it's always about getting your business foundation in order. So a lot of business owners just jump out. Okay, so let me just kind of back up a little bit. Business credit is now becoming a more popular term, right? Um, and, you know, anything that we want to find, we can find on the Internet. We can find, you know, we, we can find it. There's YouTube videos. You know, there's so many different resources. There's free Facebook groups, right? However, there's a way that the Internet, like, tells you and instructs you and, and hearsay on how you can build business credit. And then there's actually ways that you can actually do it step by step. One of the common mistakes that I see for business owners is that they skip over the fundamentals, which is actually having a strong, solid entity type, you know, mm -hmm. and having that registered and active with the secretary of state, um, having a separate bank account. I see a lot of small business owners in particular are still operating like synonymous, like you are the business and, you know, you um um, represent yourself. So, for instance, let's say that for I'm going to just use you for example. Do you mind, Marcus? If I, just I do not you? mind, I do okay. not mind. Okay, so um, as a business, let's say for gentleman um, style podcast, right? 
you are a gentleman style podcast. Let's say that you have a sponsorship, but you're commingled, right? For example, let's say that your sponsorships aren't going to gentleman style podcast as its own unique business is actually going to you. So you're operating as a sole proprietor. Well, there's only a limited amount of financing that you can get or funding that you can get for your business, um, especially if you don't want it to be attached to your social security number or to your information, but you want it to be attached to your business. Then I see a lot of business owners that co-mingle funds. So in this example, it's like gentleman style podcast get sponsorships, right? And then you're putting that sponsorship money into a personal bank account. You're operating one in the same. But let's say Marcus Norman as a person is separate. And Gentleman Style Podcast is its own entity, whether that's, you know, Gentleman Style Podcast LLC, whether it's Gentleman Style Podcast um, as an S Corp or as a C Corp, you have a separate entity with an EIN number, an employer identification number. So therefore, when you receive sponsorships, when you receive um, individuals who are interested in an in, in ad space or campaign space or hosting live events with you, then yes. they write it to, you know, they, they write the checks to Gentleman Style Podcast and Gentleman Style Podcast has its own business bank account, its own infrastructure, and you can get and obtain funding strictly under your business without tapping into your social. The challenge that most business owners do is that they're commingling the funds together. And that's where it gets a little murky. So what I would encourage um, entrepreneurs to do is to separate your funds. There's many benefits to that. Separate um, your assets and your business. Uh, just separate those things. Um, and it can get into legalities and all of that. Always consult with the CPA or for any legal advice or anything in reference to entities, but make sure that you have a separate entity structure. I don't care if you are a dog walker. I don't care if you bake cakes. I don't care if you have only fans. Make sure you turn your business and your brand into its own entity. That's the common mistake that I see a lot of entrepreneurs um, do. They commingle their funds. That is major, y'all. This is fantastic. And yes, Moya, you are correct. She is dropping all some <laughs> diamonds. This is diamonds. This is great. This is wonderful because we don't have that introspective that introspection on ourselves, right? We are not going to tear ourselves apart. But the expert, your company, you and your team are going to tear in and dive deep and help us get to a better level. We have one commercial commercial break. We yeah. have to pay some bills, y'all, as hey. you all know. <laughs> and we won't keep the lights on. We're gonna keep this show running, but we will be right, right back. Tune in, stay engaged, and see you guys. Good day, podcast listeners. This is your boy, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels. Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level. Duke Duchess, which is our season level and the emperor and empress, which is our most sophisticated level, which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab. We will also be sharing polls, upcoming events, and interviews, as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly. Your support helps me find new and exciting guests to bring to the stage live. Well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys. Bye. Hey everybody, it's Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast, your host, the number one podcast coming to you live. We have the incredible, the amazing, super fragilistic XP, Miss Darby herself of BCA Culture, and she is changing the game. She just spilled some nuggets, y'all. If you missed that, please scroll back and check her out. She just spilled some solid gems on some of the mistakes, one of the biggest mistakes businesses do when starting 
um, to build that business credit and establish themselves as a separate entity, commingling funds, opening the wrong incorporation, incorporating incorrectly, and just just doing all the wrong things that are not preparing us for um, the future ahead of our business and applying for big grants and loans and credit cards and putting us in position to win. She just spelled some gems. We have the incredible Miss Darby to the show. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. Right back at you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. What are some key differences between business credit and personal credit? Well, a uh, business credit has its own EIN number. Personal credit, you use your social security number to apply for things. Um, business credit, you can receive 10 to 100 times a greater funding capacity than you can with personal credit. So for example, under a personal credit card, let's say you apply for it under your social security number, you apply for that card, you might get, you know, a secured card $200, $300 for your like for a secured card, right? But for business credit, you might receive 10 to 100 times that capacity. So on business credit, you can, for that first card, it can be a $2,000 to $3,000 secure, um, secured, I mean, unsecured card. As opposed to personal credit, it might be a secured card, um, $200 where you put a deposit down that matches the credit limit, you know. But for business credit, you have a larger capacity because creditors, banks want to land to businesses because small businesses, which is obvious during the pandemic and essential workers keep this country moving. So it's more beneficial for banks, for funding companies to extend funding to business owners than sometimes it is to personal credit because you only have a certain amount of capacity to handle the credit that you're being extended. Um, also, under business credit, you can purchase the same things that you can get under your personal credit. You can get a home. You can buy. You can get office space right under your business credit. You can get business vehicles under your business credit. So this gets into what is that? Control everything but own nothing, or own own nothing but control everything. But you're you're controlling it through your business entity. So um, another difference, a key difference in business credit and personal credit is that with business credit, you have a different scoring model. OK, on personal credit, it's ranging from like 350 to 800. Right. With the, the three main bureaus with business credit, you have three main bureaus done in Bradstreet, which gives you your paydex score. Uh, you have Equifax and you have experience. Right. So and then you also have others, the Small Business Financial Exchange, Credit Safe, um, Equifax. So the, the list goes on and on. So you have different businesses, business uh, credit reporting agencies, different scoring models. I mean, just so many uh, different benefits with business credit. And to be honest, this is how major corporations <laughs> target Walmart. I mean, you can go on and on. Some of the top competitors in your cities are utilizing and leveraging business credit to obtain government contracts, to get grants, to grow and expand all of this uh, pandemic funding that's out. People are securing it through some type of credit, right, to be able to grow and expand. And then some of the companies are just structurally set up to where they can receive um, grants and contracts from their cities, their states and at the um, government level. So those are just some key differences between personal credit and business credit. From my experience, literally like my own story, I literally, when I first started building out business credit, I had no personal credit because I was paying for everything cash, right? So, you wow. know, having no personal credit is just as bad as having, you know, at the time it was just as bad as like not having any credit. So I had to literally start from scratch. And I kid you no lie, Marcus, I built my business credit faster than my personal credit. Like, I, I, everything is under my business credit. Everything is under all of my companies, everything. So business credit, you could do way more. I mean, it's, you could do so much more. Yes. I mean, it's great to have an awesome personal credit score, especially when you're going, you know, for the higher levels of funding and stuff like that. But business credit can grow just like that. And you just have to make sure you take care of it. That's major. Right. And that's huge. Right. And you touched on something that's a lot of us, a lot of us mix up and a lot of us confuse is that the, the, the separation, there's a separation. 
right? It's not, and and that's going to lead to our next question. But that's that because from our audiences, that's major. People think that oh, I have to attach myself to my business. I have to be a part of my business. I have to put the house up for you know. I have to link my personal assets to this business. But there needs to be a separation. There needs to be a division. And and the fact that you're doing it well. You, you have to lead the charts because that's what you do. <laughs> exactly. But that's major that we mess up all the time. And so help help me. This That's a common question. I have business credit, mm-hmm. right? But I'm still being required to attach my social security number to applications for credit or, or financing. What am I doing wrong? So there's nothing that's being done wrong there, okay? Like through, there's federal regulation that just for identity purposes, most so there's two ways i can receive that question let me kind of back it up there are two ways to build business credit and there's two ways to get funding okay so you're either going to get funding or any type of line of credit from either using your personal credit or your business credit okay those are the only two ways that you could do it okay now when you ask the question um what pretty much does my business credit have to be personally guaranteed by my personal credit, right? right? So that means using on the applications they're asking for your social. Well, through federal law, they have to ask for that for identification, right? right. But there are certain lenders and creditors and vendors that will not ask for your social, or you can deny and say, hey, I want the applications without being a personal guarantor. But the only reason, only way that you can ask for that is that you have to have those fundamentals of the, your business built up prior to. So on the applications, yes, they might ask for your, they will ask for your social, not might, they will ask for it for identity purposes. But like, let's say there's popular cards like Capital One Spark, those cards require your um, social. If you do not want it to require your social, then there's other business credit cards out there that do not require your social. But you want to make sure that you have a true viable business because I've seen it happen time and time again, Mark, is, you know, someone watching today. Oh, my gosh, I have bad credit. I have bad personal credit. Right. Someone might be watching it right now thinking, oh, this is an avenue for me to, you know, grow and expand my business. And it is. But those habits on the personal side cannot be taken over to the side on business credit because the, having businesses and entities give you another opportunity to build credit just on the business side. And there's certain vendors, there's certain creditors, there's certain people who will report trade lines and post specifically to your business so you can build your business credit. Most companies do not. And that, that's, that's where BCA culture comes in because we just say, hey, here are the companies who you can build your credit with and strictly build your business credit with and use your EIN. But then the companies that use a social, which are the more popular credit cards, more popular credit card companies that we're familiar with, they will ask you to be a personal guarantor and they do not report. They do not report to business credit. They only report to your personal credit in the case that you default on their cards. So if, if for, for anyone that's watching and listening, Make sure that you always just read that fine line between when you're applying for these cards and see if they require you to be personally uh, the personal guarantor. Most major banks, most major lenders, right? (laughs) Most major banks and lenders, funding companies will ask for that for identity purposes. But if you want to kind of get around that, then you want to make sure that you're applying with companies who are saying, well, hey, we'll extend your credit, but you don't have to be a personal guarantee for it. But you do have to show a history of good payment history with your business credit. So BCA culture, from what I understand, BCA culture streamlines that process. Yeah. And so, so, and, and it even sounds like I could still have bad personal credit mm-hmm. and, and work with your company and you can help streamline the process that even though I have bad credit, you can still point me to the vendors that don't even consider my credit at all. And they're just going to be focused on a solid business entity. Right. Exactly. Yep. Because they're two, you're two separate entities and that's the power. This is the the secret, right? That's in plain sight that these, your entities that we set up, that is an extension of our legacy. And that is literally the wealth gap, especially as minorities. You know, more people in the news are talking about, oh, we need to close the wealth gap. We need to do this. We need to do that. It's not money. 
per se. It's information in us applying this knowledge so we can close the wealth gap. Because when we know how we can operate through entities, then that will help close the wealth gap altogether. And these strategies are legal. These strategies are readily um, readily available. They're known. The big companies are using this is not, you know, any new strategy per se. It's just being made more available to the public because we've actually streamlined the knowledge and the information. Whoo! My ears are burning. My ears are burning, y'all. This is incredible. This is informational, and this is powerful, y'all. Miss Miss Darby and her company is helping us get to a better process, and she's helping us, dare I say, do better business, mm -hmm. which is major, right? We are doing it absolutely wrong, and we're not approaching it. A lot of people are under investigation right now because of those PPP loans and because of those EI, EIDL loans, and we messed those up. The paperwork's messed up. The business um, isn't legitimized. It's not the right way. And so yeah. this here culture gets you aligned and gets you and puts you in position to win. Yeah. And if, if Marcus, there was a question that was just asked by a real estate holding company that just popped up. And um, he was like, you know, I still have to attach my my social, you know, what am I doing wrong? Let me just, if, if, if I can interject this really quick, for real estate companies, for investment companies, um, for any type of credit companies, you know, uh, banks, you're considered high risk. So if you are a high risk company, you have real estate, if you have, you know, these names in your, in your applications, they're automatically going to ask you for certain uh, information and, and it needs to be uh, your social because you are in a high risk industry. If you're in a lower risk industry and there's strategies, if you're in a lower risk industry, then you still have to make sure that, you know, you apply, but you can, there's, again, there's certain vendors and, and creditors that you can apply with without having to use um, your social, right? But that- What's, what's a lower risk industry? Yeah. So lower risk industry, business consulting. Um, lower risk industries. I mean, it's, oh man, it's so many different the NAT codes because they're going to go by the NAT codes. Um, low risk industries are industries that could turn profits, right? Um, retail is considered high risk. E-commerce is considered high risk. Real estate is considered high risk. Low risk business consulting, marketing, um, um, uh, um, sales. Only um, fans. Oh, you see, oh, I mean, <laughs> influencers, personal brands, right? Um, I mean, there's so many different um, opportunities. We have like a full list of them, like in our software that we're, you know, constantly updating. But, um, you know, just we tell you the NAT codes not to use, the NAICS codes not, you know, to kind of stay away from um, just because they're considered high risk. And also, too, it depends on what type of applications you're doing. Most likely you're applying for the traditional uh, credit, the traditional lines of credit, the traditional business lines of credit through larger and more traditional bank institutions, which they will ask you for those. But there's other alternatives. And so that's what we um, dive into. Ooh. That is deep, y'all. You see how she di dissected that? You see how she <laughs> dove deep and dissected that to its finest points? I love that. And that's why I had to work very hard to get Miss Darby on the show. Hey, I want to point something out really quick. You guys notice Miss Shanique down there? She's Miss Shanique. She has that little notification next to her name. She is a paid VIP sponsor. And so if you are interested in sponsoring the show, yep, yep, we love it. We love it. These sponsors help us get unique and fantastic guests like Miss Darby on the show. All of this you see here is not magic, right? It shows up due to hard work and grind and partnerships. And so I want to thank Sh Ms. Shanique and our other sponsors who are tuning in to thank you for your support of the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And I just wanted to say that quick. Thank you for Sh Shanique for your support. We appreciate you. Miss Darby. So, um, Profit, right? One of the things that's considered in business credit is profit and revenue, right? How much is your business making, right? And it's not the money that you're co-mingling, right? Because we want to avoid that. But how does a nonprofit apply for business credit, right? Because technically, I'm not supposed to make money. Well, okay, so nonprofit is just your entity classification, Got right? But right. NFL is a nonprofit organization. Lies. Really? <laughs> I had no idea, that, but they make millions of dollars. At, okay, exactly. Nonprofit doesn't mean broke. Nonprofit <laughs> is a, a entity structure that can is 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 a is is 
like asset protection, you know, um, nonprofit is a shelter, a tax shelter. Um, nonprofit is a way to be able to give back, you know. Um, so nonprofit doesn't necessarily mean like no profit. That is just an entity classification. But I mean, look it up right now. The, I, I was shocked. It, the NFL is a, a, a nonprofit organization. And their entity type, I'm actually going to look it up um, because it's kind of. That's unique. unique. That is very unique. And that's um, powerful. I have no idea. It's 501c6. Really? Yeah. What? But they make millions of dollars a year. Right. Millions. And so there's They're a reason why they're classified as that. <laughs> corporate america we got i'm in the wrong business y'all i'm getting out of podcasting i'm shutting down the show y'all see me i'm gonna go play professional football or something i'm in the wrong business so but that's a non-profit doesn't mean that it's non-profitable it just means that that's that entity classification that makes sense that makes huge sense and so i want to point out something i want to tune into something really big um it's on your website um, and it speaks to the, the skill set and the diversity that your company works on. But it's a review um, on your page. Mm. And it was left by, let's see here, Miss Shante Johnson. Yeah, Shante. Since, since working with BCA, I have been able to get my foundation in order properly reinstated my SOS, I have been approved for three Net30 accounts, one Speedway fleet card, one business MasterCard, a PayPal grant, EIDL loan and grant while in a pandemic. Being a part of this revolution that the BCA creates has been amazing. Woo woo. Shout out to Shantae. She, you know, Shantae, Shanika, Melissa Neal, uh, Melissa Neal uh, next to her has already in the midst of a pandemic been awarded over a quarter of a million dollars in funding and grants and yes, Marcus. I mean, the money is available. I mean, Shantae again, I mean she Shantae was actually with us when we remember I was telling you the story how we were the the uh teaching the classes. She was with us when we were teaching the classes. Shantae is still with us today um as a member. Shantae smashed the game. She took the fundamentals because once your business foundation is in order you're good to go. And um, Shantae took took the fundamentals and just wash, rinse, and repeat it and just use it over and over again. And she's been able, she has a brick and mortar business um, located uh, west of Atlanta and has been um, it has been doing her thing and, and, and um, smashing a business in the midst of a pandemic, smashing in a good way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Shantae. That is dope. Yeah. Right, you guys are changing the absolute different and just changing how we do business in an amazing and affordable way. We got one more commercial break, y'all. Stay tuned, don't go anywhere. We gonna be right, right back. Stay tuned. I'm Marcus Norman, bringing fresh vibes to hot topics surrounding culture, relationships, business, finance, sex, dating, faith, and everything in between. Whether you're into passive income opportunities, trending topics and useful relationship tips, or dynamic guest speakers, there's something for everyone. You can expect all that and more every week. If you're down with this content, then consider joining our growing community by subscribing to Gentleman Style Podcast and smash the bell to get on our VIP list. Your support means the world. Thanks for watching. Link to my channel. Hey everybody, we are back. We have the incredible Miss Darby. She just explained to us and broke things down on how to do better business in our business. And we also read some reviews off of some previous experiences of businesses that Miss Darby and her BCA culture team took a business to the absolute next level, getting a proof for grants, EIDL loans, and just smashing, in your words, smashing the game. <laughs> Bring baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's powerful. This this whole thing, you do a lot. Your business does a lot. Your company does a lot. But this 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 can't be affordable, right? How affordable is it to work with BCA Culture? You know, um, BCA Culture, we knew early on that we wanted to offer a product that small business owners can't afford, small to mid-size. So we are looking at, um, thank you so much, Shanique. Um, our business 
literally we have a uh, monthly plans so that way every month we do reporting to equifax and credit safe so we report those payments on time um depending upon where a business is in their in their uh, company if they're a startup when a company goes to bcaculture.com um they can get started for as little as a hundred dollars a month up to um whatever their range is yeah because we decided not to make it something that beats people over the head. These are things that you can utilize um, and you get access to the software. Um, you go right in. Um, our starting level is at $117 per month. Um, we are actually getting ready to um, increase our prices, but we're very affordable. Um, and we literally have impacted, I mean, thousands of business customers and clients. And we're grateful to be able to do it, um, whether a customer needs uh, funding, whether a customer is looking to build their business credit, um, that's where we start. And then depending upon your level, where you are in your business, then the prices increase. So it's a stair step uh, pricing based upon where you are in your business and you just pay it monthly. Absolutely. Woo. That is affordable. Y'all yeah. I thought you, this is absolutely a million dollar company and they're giving back in the most unique way and bringing the price to a, a, a reasonable level. And they're not knocking you over the head. Hey, Chrisanda, Miss Watson, another sponsor. Thank you for your sponsorship. <laughs> I love this. I love the show. We have a question from the audience. Okay. Ms. Sh Shamika Tremaine asked the question, is funding available for someone who is just starting out? That is someone with only a, a business plan and a dream or should the business already be operating and generating revenue so you know that's a great question so in that case um shanika um there's two ways you can get funding you can either get it through your personal based on your uh personal credit or you can get it through your business so right now if you're a brand brand new startup company there's an avenue that we like to call creative financing. Um, but if you're looking for funding like more traditional ways, then in that case, you will have to be like a personal guarantee, a personal guarantor. Um, if you want to just be able to go out, you can personally guarantee your credit card for your business and be able to leverage and use that. Most people don't want to do that, as I mentioned before, just because um, they don't want to commingle their funds or help be held liable. You know, if something happens with the business, then you'd be held personally liable. But when you separate it, you can um, you you won't necessarily have to be as much. Um, so to answer your question, there are ways to be able to get access to funding when you're first starting off. It just depends if you want to do it on the personal side or if you want to um, do it on your business. And then um, another part of that with your business is if you're looking to build your business credit, then you want to give yourself anywhere from three to six months to be able to build out a real business credit profile. I know there's different people who do things, you know, they can slap on trade lines. I mean, there's so many different ways you can get, you know, build up your credit, have a score within 30 to 60 days, and you can keep growing and building. So there's, there's different alternatives that you can have to be able to build up your business. Forgive me. I'm looking down because I'm taking notes and uh, <laughs> I'm cheating a little bit, y'all. I'm cheating a little bit, but but I get to do that because it's my show. Great question, Tremaine. That is an absolute fabulous question, and that's powerful. And thank you for Miss Darby. That yeah. was informational. Miss Darby, what's your favorite way to give back to the community? You know, um, I think one of the ways that I'm evolving into is, you know, I love being able to um, give back, but now I'm transitioning more into an investor role. Um, I really want to invest into uh, business owners, particularly minority business owners, particularly black, because minority is so broad nowadays. So let me be very specific, um, particularly black business owners. I just want to be able to say, okay, hey, let's look at your business. Let's work it out. You work the business. I'll invest and we'll come back. You know, like Shark Tank, that's the position that I really am evolving to and I, I i just want to be an investor because i know that the more business um businesses that we can empower to create legacy companies to build wealth i'm not talking about rich and you know six or seven figures i'm talking about really building massive legacies um companies then that's going to require investment that's going to require like giving back so i see myself transitioning to like a um, if I could put it into something where we can actually see it, it's like a female magic, shark. you know, it's like a female shack. You know, these guys, they've taken their 
prior careers, leveraged them, and have built massive entities. And yeah, I'm like a female shark. That that's what I want to do. And I see myself transitioning into that, which is investing into to small business owners who are viable, and also even you know taking some businesses that's, that's toe up from the flow up. And saying, hey, you got you got the drive, but you just need the point <laughs> and some accountability and, you know, um, really helping to transform those businesses. I, that's my my gift. And I'm this pandemic has actually helped me to really see that, which is, you know, what? I'm really an investor and I invest my time and my knowledge into people. But I want to invest finances into it and invest time and be able to just travel the country and post conference calls and say, hey, how's the business doing? Go in and um, give small business owners, black business owners, access to resources that I've used to um, get my companies to where they are today. I love that. That That, that is, in a nutshell, philanthropy. Yes. Philanthropist. She wants to be a philanthropist. She wants to invest her time and energy into the businesses, into the companies, um, black-owned companies that are going to change the world. Yeah. And then, then uh, of course, she's going to make a profit from it, but mm -hmm. it's more so she gets to pick and choose with industries, right? Too many times we've been held down and held back in business because we did, we lacked capital. Mm -hmm. We lacked resources. Our businesses lacked resources when it was at the pivot point. And mm -hmm. so, and so I, 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 although we're talking about business credit and money, I say resources because yeah. along with Miss Darby, you get access to not only her capital, you may not need capital, just like she said, you may just be busted and on the wrong path and she can bring her resources to you and mm -hmm. get you going in the right direction. And for her time, for her energy, she reaps the benefit as an investor in that way as well. We're not just talking mm -hmm. about money here. And so I love that. I love it too. That's huge. That's huge. That's bo boss moves. Boss, <laughs> boss goals. Don't Ms. tell anybody. <laughs> no, I, I won't. I won't. I'll just put it publicly on, on the podcast. show. <laughs> <laughs> what clientele, what kind of clientele or what should people have when they come to seek out BCA culture? What things should a business owner have when seeking you out? You know, uh, personal development is key. Um, you know, because we'll teach you along the way some things that you want to incorporate into your business. But being personally developed, being um, a person of fortitude and of character is key because it's going to take endurance as you're building up your company. And then being able to um, be adaptable. Um, some resources, of course, definitely want to have the finances to be able to pay for the services. But just um, make sure that the attention span, the comprehension level um, is there. I mean, I've learned in this industry that uh, there's a lot of education that has to go out, particularly in our community. There's a lot of education that's needed, a lot of education that's required. Um, I'm seeing it now as, as companies are coming to us, as small business owners are coming to us for the Paycheck Protection Program and for the EIDL. I'm seeing that there is the lack of understanding and comprehension. Mark, is just with even just basic basic things, you know, um, understanding what a voided check is. I mean, you know, those, those type of things. And it's like, when I first looked at it, I was like, what? But I get it, that's the wealth gap. And so when a company comes to us, come as you are, like, you know, we, we've heard several times in, in Church. churches and things, come as you are. But be willing to change because who mm. you are today, you will not be able to be that same person with the knowledge and the information and be able to grow. You've got to apply the knowledge and have an awesome work ethic and you'll do extremely well in anything that you touch. Ooh wee. Mm -hmm. Ms. Darby, how can my audience connect with you? How can they reach out with you? How can we do better business and grow with you and connect with you? Well, um, we have our website. We have a BCA culture, www bcaculture.com. Um, you can go there. Uh, we offer a free business credit and funding analysis form. So when you go into the site, you, you sign up an account. Yeah, go on, go on there and do that analysis. It's really quick, but it'll let you know where you are. If you're a startup company, you know, if you're a mid-sized company, <laughs> if you are, you know, a growing company, it'll let you know what you have and some things that you want to consider you know, moving forward to be prepared to have strong foundations. So um, you could do that. Very simple analysis. You'll get a BCA score. 
And then from there, it'll recommend to you the levels that you can start in our software. So um, also another area where you can um, reach out social media. Uh, we have Facebook, uh, BCA Culture, our, our business page is BCA Culture. Um, we have like a Facebook group, BCA Culture Community. So you can join, request to join our community as well. Uh, BCA Culture Community on Facebook. It's a group. And um, BCA Culture on Facebook, on Instagram. We are at BCA Culture Live. So um, we're accessible, we're available. Um, we have YouTube. So we're on all platforms, all platforms except for Instagram is at BCA Culture. And then on Instagram at BCA Culture Live. That's powerful. That is powerful. So please, y'all, we need to uplift this movement. This is a movement. She is a whole vibe, right? <laughs> and we need to connect with Miss Miss Darby and her team um, because this is the future, right? When we get out of this pandemic, when we get out of this recession, um, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of businesses that have unfortunately failed. But mm -hmm. But partnering with her we are going to be in position to win. And so yeah. when we get out of this recession, Ms. Darby and her team is going to take your business and prepare your business and keep you sustained. You just saw the review. If you missed it, scroll back and check out the commentary and the reference um, that that a customer, a client um, received from partnering with BCA Culture in, in what she received in grants, um, EIDL, and now we're going into an, another round of PPP loans. So oh, I think you froze up on us. Whoops. I am still here. But connect with Ms. Darby and her team and connect with what she is doing and the movement she is on. And so that is absolutely powerful. And that's unique because we need um, what you're doing and what you're connecting. So Ms. Darby, I want to say to you, don't ever give up. Thank Please. you. Please don't ever give up because um, we need you. The world needs you and what you're doing. Thank you. And Absolutely. life to you for what you're doing, Gentleman Style Podcast, your brand, what you stand for, what you represent. Um, it's so important for the melanin to be representing and for men to be in your rightful place. So thank you so much um, for leading the way in what you're doing and for even spreading the knowledge. And thank you to your listeners and to the sponsors who actually help the messages like these to just keep going forward. So thank you so much for your vision as well. Absolutely. Thank you. I, I prefer the term chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> melanin works. Melanin works. Thank you, Ms. Darby. And thank you, my audience of thank Gentleman you. Style Podcast. You guys are incredible. Like I always end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your families, and always, always, always take care of business. This is Marcus Norman with Gentleman Style Podcast and Ms. Darby with BCA Culture signing off. Love you. <laughs>